I'm going to need you to answer this question, and I want you to be completely honest. What is wrong with D.L. Hughley? You just can't stop getting fired, huh? Every time I turn around, somebody's firing you. <laughs> Something's wrong with the guy. He went from being this comedian that we all loved, that we thought was funny, to he turned into this shield for the Democratic Party to the point where he's just a faucet of talking points directly out of Joe Biden's ass. Come on, it's not even hard for me. And I, and I hate when people go, it's the lesser of two evils. Right. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Someone's got to correct it. And since no one's correcting it, I got to step up and do it. I'm going to use that video. His interview with Don Lemon to prove to you D.L. Hughley has a lot of explaining to do. Now, now, look, I know some of you are like, Tim Black, you better come with it because we love D.L. Hughley. I don't even know why you're calling this brother out. I hate black on black crime. First of all, that's exactly why I got to do this. Because people respect D.L. People love D.L. People listen to him. And that's why it's dangerous. People are listening to him, and what he's saying don't make sense. And some of you are being fooled by that. So I'm here to set the record straight. My name is Tim Black. This is Calling Out, and today I'm calling out D.L. Hughley. So you are, with that said, you have been very critical of the former president. I don't, you, were you critical? Sure. To, listen, I don't know. Maybe I should have done better research. Were you critical of Obama? Of course. Okay. I thought that Obama, a lot of the things that are happening now, um, I thought that he uh, did a lot of things. I mean, a lot of the uh, the the the, the uh, legislative agenda was was basically from the Heritage Foundation. So he bent over backwards to make sure that he was conciliatory, and they didn't take. Uh, I think that one of the reasons that we have uh, the the uh, lopsidedness in the Supreme Court is because of of how um he was perceived and how he went forward so i think i've had i've been critical of him a lot i think that he wasn't as firm or as strong as he needed to be i still think he was a, a great president but in terms of uh uh joe biden i, I was so displeased hold on hold on i gotta stop us right there folks if dio hickley's been critical of obama i am a petite asian woman Look, guys, I haven't watched everything that D.L. Hughley has put out. I have not seen every interview, everything that he's possibly said since 2016. But I can tell you this. I did go over his Twitter. I looked at his Twitter, and since 20, between 2020 and 2024, there hasn't been a single solitary tweet that was negative or critical or even mildly critical of Barack Obama. And there are several. I saw about 30 tweets that he put out about that had Obama's name in them. None of them referenced what D.L.'s talking about here in this video. And that's what I'm talking about, D.L. D.L. sounds like a politician now. Yeah, his words are like word salad, but not good ones. It's the word salad that's wilted. It needs to be sent back to the kitchen. I think that he wasn't as firm or as strong as he needed to be. I still think he was a, a great president. But in terms of... Uh, uh, Joe Biden, I, I was so displeased with the uh, the war in the Gaza, the the, uh, the turmoil in Gaza, that it really made me reconsider whether I could continue to support him. And I had a dinner with him and told him and the vice president the same thing. Uh, and I said, but the problem is I don't live in Gaza. I live in the United States of America. And I'm not going to, as a protest vote, make my my children's life harder. I'm not going to give my uh, my my uh, vote to somebody. Uh, in, in a protest, in a, from a protest perspective, that would empower people that only want to make my children's life. I can't think of one group of people who wants to give you guns and abortion. Everything DL's saying sounds scripted as hell. Scripted and badly scripted, mind you. Badly scripted. Like, you don't even know the name guys. It's like trying to get it out. Cause it's like, oh, uh, yeah, I know. But talking point was, I'm upset. I'm just displeased about Gaza displeased that sounds like someone farted near you i was displeased this person gave me you know um he, he gave me a microphone that had a dirty cover on it i was displeased no there's a genocide going on right now in gaza men women and children children are being destroyed killed murdered obliterated incinerated annihilated and you said I was displeased. I, it caused me to almost reconsider my support. Your support, huh? Almost reconsidered your support. 
And then you throw out there that you went to dinner with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, and you gave him a good, strong talk or two, didn't you, there, GDL? But at the end of it, you decided, hey, your kid's life is more important than those kids' lives there in Gaza. And then I'm talking about what you're going to do with your vote. You know, you could give your vote to Biden if that's what you want to do, of course. Everyone's entitled to spend their vote the way they, got, they want to. We only have one vote. My thing is, Dear Hughley is an influencer. Dear Hughley has a radio show. He has uh, a bunch of social media accounts. He's a touring comedian. And he's going to get out here in front of the world and cape for Joe Biden, knowing that Joe Biden's done all these things, all these things that he leaves out. By the way, Joe Biden's had his fingers on every horrific crime bill that got people like D.L. Hughley and me locked up 20, 30 years of our lives. And D.L. has no problem with it. Not enough not to vote for him. He's got to vote for him anyway. And now you got Joe Biden funding a genocide. And he can't be bothered. He can't be bothered to be like, look, Joe Biden, hey, I rock with you, but what you're doing is wrong, and I won't endorse you until you turn it around. And if all the actors got together, all the comedians got together, all these influencers got together and said, hey, we're not going to put up with this, not just on this issue, on all issues. It reminds me when uh, LeBron and Dwayne Wade and and, and, and all the players out in Miami were upset about Michael Brown or Trayvon Martin. I forget which one it was. There's been so many. Maybe it was Trayvon. And we could have did something about it. And Obama was like, look, guys, come on, guys. Come on now. Don't boycott. Because LeBron and Dwayne Wade and all the players were on the verge of boycotting the NBA until they made some changes, until some changes were done. And Obama talked to um, LeBron, and all the changes went away. They decided not to boycott. They decided to fall in line. At the time, I think LeBron was like 23 years old. D.L. Hughley is 61 years old. And he doesn't have the courage, the wisdom, the tenacity, the ability, the, the foresight to say, you know what, let's do a different way. Let's go a different way with this. Let's hold Biden's feet to the fire. Instead, He's the guy that's throwing the water on the fire. He's the guy putting out the fire. He's the guy smothering the fire and saying, we must stand behind Joe for whatever reason. What guns? As if Joe Biden's going to take away somebody's guns. Get out of here, man. Joe Biden's not going to take away nobody's guns. And by the way, D.L. Hughley, Mr. South Central, Mr. Blood, there are people that live places where other people have guns. So unless you can get those guns out of those people's hands, how dare you say those people that are living in those neighborhoods should not be able to defend themselves? You don't live those places. You live somewhere really, somewhere really nice, I'm sure. How dare you talk as if other people should not have a right to defend themselves? But that's another argument. My point is this. You are caping for Joe Biden at all costs. You are talking in circles. You're not making much sense. And I'm tired of black people, working class black people, the elite blacks that you hang out with, the elite people that you rock with, all the millionaires you rock with, fine. You don't need government to work for you. But the rest of us need government to work for us. The rest of us, it matters. It matters, man. And you're a big disappointment. D.L. Hughley said he was pissed off about the way Biden was operating in Gaza and what's going on with Palestinians in, in Israel and the funding of Israel. Said he was upset about it. And him and a number of black journals, like Roland Martin is one name he named. He said other black folks were upset and they all had a meeting with, you know, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And they voiced their concerns. And things got heated. And people got loud and voices were raised. And people stuck their points in and said their thing. And at the end of the day, nothing. At the end of the day, nothing. That's it. That's all. D.L. Hughley does not have the heart to say, hey, I'm going to withhold my vote. I'm going to withhold my endorsement. At the end of the day, whatever was said, there was no like, okay, we're going to, you know, we're working on it, we're going to get this done, we're going to stop funding it. No, none of that was said. They just said, hey, we're going to do what we're going to do. And they explained they're going to do it. And D.L. Hughley was like, he felt good and he was able to get it off his chest. Him and Roland and whoever else was there, because he won't tell us who else was there, were able to get off their chest how they felt about what Biden and Kamala were doing. 
Like children, they were able to voice their discontent, their frustrations, their disagreements with the assignment. None of them, neither Roland or D.L. Hughley, had a heart to say, you know what, I'm not going to give you my vote. I'm not going to more than not give you my vote. I'm not going to give you my platform. I'm not going to give you my endorsement. I'm not going to support you. See, this is what I've been telling people from the beginning, is that if these people do not have the heart to stand up about Palestinians, they will not stand up for black folks. They'll tell people, they'll raise their voice and say, it's not right what's happening to us. Black people need more of a say. And black people need more of this and more of that. And then they'll fall down and lie down for something like DEI. Move the, the goalposts from reparations, from equity, from property and no taxes. You know, they'll move it all the way to, can we have black history taught in schools, please? Can we get Harriet Tubman on the, on the $50 bill or the whatever? How about the Juneteenth? Like, they'll move the goalposts to such a degree where nothing makes sense. And then they make it seem like them just disagreeing with Pop-Pop. Disagreeing with Papa Joe Biden is somehow good enough for us. Like, that's somehow making a statement. No, a statement is our way or the highway. You don't get to say, but my kids got to live in America, so, you know, I would hold his feet to the fire, but there's Trump over there. And what I'm trying to tell you, that's not courageous. It's not courageous to have people that you think are influencers, people that have bully pulpits, platforms, that reach millions of people to say, hey, I would really stick to my guns, but I can't because Trump, or I can't because my kids need to be safe. Your kids are already safe. They go to private schools. In fact, your kids are grown. And your grandkids, you had the money to put them in private schools away from lots of people. Stop telling us about what your kids' safety is going to be. Talk to us about the rest of us. See, the only way that we move the needle, the only way that we actually move forward, all of us, is if we have people that are bold enough to stick their foot in the ground and say, I will not be moved. And these people won't do that. But what they will do, as Zio Higley did in this video, in this conversation with, with Don Lemon, is blame rappers. Yeah, he put a he put a Charleston White and blame rappers and said Trump is like a rapper and bad rappers and rappers don't care about their communities. Blaming the most vulnerable and excusing the most powerful. So he's excusing Biden and been blaming teenage rappers who live in hellish conditions and horrible hood situations. Who's, who are under 25 years old, whose brains aren't even fully developed. Blaming them for music execs who probably told them what to put on the album and what they need to do if they need to get up out the hood. That's his whole thing. And that's how, and look, and that's how Don Lemon titled the video. Trump is like a rapper. Rapper, a rapper. You can't be serious. Really? Really? So you expect us to blame the people on the bottom of the totem pole, huh? That's a shame. Look, I know I'm not going to convince everybody that Dale Higley should not be taken seriously. But if I can convince one person to wake up and smell the coffee, if I can convince one person who was a blind follower, a listener of Roland Martin and Dale Higley's nonsense, folks, we need bold people. We need revolutionaries. We need change agents. We need people that are willing to be rebellious. We need people that are mil Both of these guys, Roland Martin and Dale Higley, are millionaires. They're not, even, they're not even willing to say, I'm over 50 years old and I'm rich. The least I could do is stand up for the people behind me that are broke, who don't have what I have, who may never make the money I make and live the life I live. Let me stand up for them and demand more out of this president whose ear I have. Instead, he's like, well, I said my piece, and they listened, and that's enough for me. Back to our regularly scheduled show of me kissing ass. And let's talk more about racism. Let's talk more about how they won't give us DEI. You know what? I'm not even sure if DEI is a, is a proper solution, but what the hell are we talking about? That's a watered-down, sanitized version of equity. 
Ooh, we can we can get a little piece of there's a few a few rich well to do blacks a few very well off blacks and get an opportunity to get a job to work inside the white supremacist system. Yeah, a few of us can do well. Like back in the nineties, where a few a few of us got good jobs in the eighties. Few of us got good jobs and everything was fine. Everybody shut the fuck up because a few black people got some money, but the rest, the masses of blacks, went to jail. And who 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 orchestrated that? Joe Biden. The same guy whose ass they're kissing. Stop talking to me about CRT and DEI. Talk to me about when you're going to have the guts, the heart to stand up and be a man or a woman and be solid and put truth to power. Speak truth to power, but put action beneath the truth, along with the truth, along with the words. But you're still going to support them because you can't see giving your vote to the other person. Oh, no question. Okay. Come on. It's not even hard for me. And, right. I, and I hate when people go, it's the lesser of two evils. Right. <laughs> that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I, I, I think that, that uh, America has uh, a really, either we believe in the notions of this country or we do not. Mm -hmm. Listen closely to what he's saying. He doesn't feel that there's two evils. There's only one evil. Trump. He doesn't consider mass incarceration going from 200,000 inmates to 2 million. He doesn't consider that evil what happened to black America in the 80s and 90s under Joe Biden. He doesn't consider that evil. No. He doesn't consider it evil that right now we are spending money, we are funding, we're providing the bombs and the missiles to kill children in Gaza. And Biden's like, well, you got to stand with Israel. Deal doesn't see that as being evil. Not evil at all. Going, going to war with, basically funding a war in Ukraine, a proxy war with Russia in Ukraine, that's cost thousands, hundreds of thousands of lives. That's that evil. But what's evil is Trump. There's more evil in the world than Trump. He won't even entertain the fact that there are two evils. Do you really believe that D.O. Hughley respects poor black people? Does he really respect poor black people? Does he really respect poor people, period? Do you really think he does? I mean, D.O. Hughley's been a rich guy for a very long time. I don't think he does, man. I don't think he does. I don't think that D.O. Hughley respects Working class people. He'll say, I'm from working class people. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. You're from Portsmouth, Virginia. But you ain't been to Portsmouth for a long time, have you? I read that you moved to Los Angeles. So just because you're from a place, don't mean you still relate to it. And what I'm saying is, when you start talking about how Biden's got no dirt on his hands, he's got no blood on his hands, while meanwhile, people are calling him Genocide Joe, and you're happy with, I talked to him, I had my, I said my piece. DL sounds like Joe Biden's his dad. He's asking dad, can he take the car out to pick his girlfriend up to take her to a movie? He sounds like a child who's upset because he can't go spend the night over his friend's house. Or he can't go out and ride his bike to the park. So what did they, what was the response, if you don't mind sharing? Um, I think initially <laughs> I said what I said and then <laughs> Madam Vice President went, well, that's a lot. <laughs> she said, that's a lot. I mean, so it was, it was, it was a lot. And then, uh, we started talking about things we agreed on, things we didn't. See, contrary to a lot of you shields that go along with whatever the Democrats say, there are some of us who have the guts, who were critical of Obama when Obama was in office, who were critical of Trump when Trump was in office, and who are critical of Biden while he's in office. That's what courage is, not this stuff you're doing. See how I could go forward with my support. I couldn't. And, and then, uh, you know, I, I think I'm more clear-headed and more sober about it now. I think that there are more things at play than what is going on in other parts of the world. And This is Cap. And it's self-serving. And don't make it, don't twist it around like it serves us. No, it serves you. It serves you. 
Let me know in the comment section what you think. I'm not saying at all that D.L. Hughley's one vote changes America. What I'm saying is, how are we going to change America if you're scared to change parties? Or if you're scared to tell boss man that you change your mind? Make it make sense.